There we go. So we have um, a Zoom session up and running and it's recording. So welcome everybody <laughs> for the most technically fraught uh, Fisky yet. Um, my name is Marty Brennan. I am the scholarly communication education librarian here at the UCLA Library. And it is a massive pleasure to see you all um, here on campus for the first time in five years, um, which is shocking and amazing. This is the slide set, correct? No, that's the one you shared. So if you um, have any technical difficulties in the Zoom, you can put something into chat. Um, but if you have a question that you want to ask the panelists, you can use the Q&A feature. Um, and uh, there are community channels in Whova where we can put more general discussion questions. Um, so, um, Welcome to Force um, 11 conference later this week and right now, Fiske 2024. Thank you for joining our committee. I was starting to say I see a lot of old Fiske types here, but I also see some brand new faces, people who have never been a Fiske before. And I hope you make them feel as welcome. Um, I've heard people talk about there's a click in Force 11 and Fiske and, and you feel like you're not quite part of the click sometimes when you first show up. I hope everybody breaks through that barrier. Um, so talk to the new people, you know, make an effort to make them feel welcome and bring them into all of your conversations. Um, we have a small group, so let's all get to know each other pretty well. I want to give um, what I should have said at the very start, the UCLA Library and Fiske organizers acknowledge the Gabrielino and Tongva peoples as the traditional land caretakers of the LA Basin and the South Channel Islands. As a land-grant institution, UCLA pays our respects to the ancestors, elders, and our relatives' relations past, present, and emerging. I also want to point out that the Fiske Code of Conduct, which is very similar to UCLA Library's Code of Conduct, uh, we are dedicated to providing a harassment-free experience for everyone, regardless of gender, gender identity and expression, age, sexual orientation, disability, physical appearance, body size, race, ethnicity, religion, or lack thereof, and technology choices or other group status. Um, it's really important to us that everybody feels to be welcome and encouraged in that way. Uh, we hope you look at the code of conduct not as um, a punitive or uh, overly directive thing, but something that you know should be embraced um, in its core ethic. Let's make everybody feel comfortable and welcome. So I want to introduce to you Athena Jackson. She's the uh, somewhat brand new university librarian here at UCLA, and she's got some comments for you. Thanks. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. How are you all today? I love doing this with visitors, and it's uh, if you'll indulge me, I just want you to, um, with me, I'm going to count to three, so get your body ready, and we'll take a big, deep breath together. Ready? One, two, three. Now I'm inviting you to be in this space together. There's a lot going on in the world. There's a lot going on probably in your heads and your family, your organizations. And you're gonna talk about some heady stuff, some things that we all need in our fields while the rest of the world is sort of swirling around us and it's on our mind in different ways. And I understand that that can um, get infused in dialogues. And um, I hope you'll feel welcome to engage as you can and step away when you need to. It's beautiful in Los Angeles today. So find that time to get your vitamin D. As Marty said, I'm the Norman and Armina Powell Li University Librarian. I'm delighted to welcome you to UCLA Libraries. We gather for Fiske 2024. Also want to take a moment to thank Marty for his leadership shaping the conference and to acknowledge the work of more than a dozen UCLA library and UCLA staff who played, played important roles like logging in and being the host or troubleshooting on uh, getting us online or just making sure that the room was all set up. Um, in particular, members of the Advancing Scholarly Communications Group did quite a bit of extensive planning to execute this event and to welcome you here in person today. 
Creating spaces for robust exchanges of ideas and information is central to what an academic library does. One special value of libraries is that can be a common ground for all and everyone to feel like they can find themselves in our library collections, be themselves in our library spaces, and enjoy themselves as they grow and learn. It is in this spirit that I welcome you to UCLA Library. Among my team's biggest challenges, and also something I'm grateful for, is what UCLA stands for and how it keeps us continually ranked as the number one public university in the United States. This consistent excellence helps UCLA Library understand the scale of services we need to provide, and we rebalance this with spaces where we can do high touch impact with individuals along their research journey, leading first with curiosity. And here are some examples of scale. UCLA Library helps 46,000 UCLA students, students are scholars from every background, and they gain access to materials, research help, and inclusive spaces that they need to successfully complete coursework, pursue their academic goals, and to build and apply knowledge in a rapidly changing world. And I'm gonna go off script and say, we really help the creative experience of our students here. We have lots of performers, artists in our um, ecosystem. I'm really proud of the work they do. The number of majors and minors at UCLA has gone from 278 in 2014 to 327 today. That's quite a jump in terms of what the library can support. We collect in 414 languages and dialects, and I expect this number to grow. We support teaching, research, and patient care needs in the UCLA Health Enterprise, which is also ranked number one in California. The role of SCALCOM underpins the library's ability to scale our operation, in part by ensuring that our students and faculty are able to evaluate, build, access, and share knowledge now and into the future. The UCLA Library and our partners across 10 campus campus university uh, California system pay close attention to the world of open access, research communication, and publishing. In fact, UCLA Library is on the forefront in important develops in our developments in our approach to open access. Thanks in large part to a lot of people in this room like Todd Rapone, and I see John, and I see Marty, and some folks across um, our library. We're celebrating our second decade with an open access policy, allowing for a green OA deposit of scholarly articles in our online repository, eScholarship. And the University of California Library System has gone further in recent years, negotiating so-called transformative agreements, agreements with publishers that allow for full coverage of APCs when publishing in one of the, uh, the publisher's OA journals. Uh, it's being recorded, but if you want to talk to me about that off the record, I can share what I think about all of this, but we're very excited that we're moving that needle forward, right? And the University of California library system has gone further in recent years. Um, oh, I just repeated myself. We look forward to expand our footprint in the coming years with the pilot program and provision of open access fees for UCLA affiliated academic authors, a small project that uh, Todd and I are working on together. And we have recently joined a statewide initiative on the creation of an open source program office here at UCLA, just emerging on several of the UC campuses. Todd is here as well, and he can probably talk to you about that too. He's back there waving. As you head into what is certain to be an inspiring conference of a small and close-knit community that I think will grow as you get to know one another, I'm sure you'll learn from your colleagues about issues within your field. I'd just like to mention that our own scholarly communications librarian, Jennifer Chan, is co-teaching a course on open monographs where you will learn more about our complex and thoughtful approach to this issue. I'm really happy that you're here. I know you came from many points of the compass. I hope you excel that deep breath. And then when you get back to work, you breathe in deeply again and make things happen for our entire community. Have a wonderful time and I hope to see you throughout this week. Thank you so much. Thank you, Athena, that was great. And I want to um, thank you for your support of Fisky. And I, I wanna uh, uh, point out my boss, John Reamer, and his boss, Todd Grappone, um, who have been incredibly supportive in all the work I've done throughout the year in the planning of Fisky and forgot to, to animate. There's a picture of <laughs> Athena. Um, so uh, this week, uh, we just had the Fisky virtual event uh, end last week, and it went really well. There was about 190 people plugged into it uh, in some fashion, 
and um, the courses all came off without a hitch, as far as I know. And um, we had a great plenary event on Friday, which was recorded, and we hope that you can catch it. And now we are starting Fisky on campus. So each one of your courses has a private Whova page. And I will say, um, um, I have spent a lot of time working on the registration side and um, the setup of everything. And I have not paid much attention to the communication tools that are in the front, all the community channels that you can use, the questions that you can ask, and you can engage people in a lot of interesting ways in Whova. And so I hope you all dive in and use Whova in an interesting way. Look to the community conversations in there when you have a minute in your dorm room and you're looking at your computer. You have no TV, so you have to look at your computer <laughs> and um, see what's going on. Um, there is a Google Drive for all of the courses too. So you don't necessarily see everything in Whova. Whova only allows PDFs and PowerPoint slides to be uploaded into its system. It doesn't allow other format stuff. So if they're spreadsheets or uh, other kinds of documents, they won't be able to be there. So they're placed in the Google Drive for your class and it should be dynamically connected on the Whova site but it may not be. If, if it's not, let us know and we can iron that out. So check Whova for your specific room locations for your classes. All the rooms are here in YRL. This is the main conference room and this will be converted to being a classroom space. Um, immediately to your left are the executive conference room and the green room. They're smaller conference room spaces that can be used for whatever purpose that we need. If people need a room for a meeting or something, that's not very possible. Just beyond that is the presentation room. That's a, a formal uh, classroom as well to be used. Over to the right here is a gallery space that's been reconfigured into a classroom called the Scholarly Innovation Lab. It's run by a faculty group, and it's really just a set of, of um, uh, computer setups. Um, there's no uh, projection screen in there, but there is a big screen TV around a round table, which should suit the purposes of that class. And then there's a fourth classroom on this floor, the Research Commons classroom, which is out in the Research Commons space. Um, and that's a very traditional uh, classroom setup. The fifth room is the West Electronic classroom that's up on the second floor. And uh, again, a very traditional classroom space. If you have any issues as you get in, I'm going to run around and check at each each room and make sure everything's OK. But um, we're hoping you're just looking for a traditional classroom setup. And if you have any issues or special needs, just let me know. and We'll do our best to accommodate you. Oh, so here's the space here. You see right we're right up here in the upper corner is the conference room. Then there's the exec and the green room. The presentation room is just the other side of it there. This room is not the main gallery, that is the Scholarly Innovation Lab. Then the Research Commons classroom is way over here um, across a bunch of study space in the Research Commons. And then you can either go up these stairs, you know, that stairwell that's um, out in the, in the lobby. You can take that up to the second level or take the elevators there up to the second level and then go down a long hallway um, there's only a couple of ways you can go, so you'll find it uh, up on the second floor. Um, you can always send us an email at, at, at Fisky Info, uh, and we'll do our best to help you. Um, I want to welcome all the Fisky instructors. I don't think they're all in this room, but these are all the people that have come from around the world, from, uh, from the UK, from uh, Singapore, from Australia. Um, you know, Australia. <laughs> um, so we really love the wide uh, scope of people uh, from Chile. And um, um, where else am I missing? Anybody? Oklahoma. <laughs> Argentina. Okay. And Germany. Okay, wonderful. So that's just the instructors, but you know, it's it's one of the great things that we're able to bring in from uh, people from around the world. Everybody volunteered their time to put this course together, put together a proposal, submit it for review, accept the comments of the of the 
program committee and improve the course um, and build it and come to campus and deliver it. Um, so, you know, the least we could do is pay for your flight and your room um, in order to teach the course. And we hope you have a wonderful time here in LA. Enjoy yourself very much, um, all Fisky instructors. And Fisky scholarship recipients, how many do we have, if you can stand, if you're a Fisky scholarship recipient? I know it's just a handful of you. Thanks, guys. <laughs> um, I know there's at least five more people. Um, I think they they the ones that got diverted into breakfast off campus somehow. I don't know what's going on, but they'll they'll get here by 10 o'clock, I'm sure, for the course. Um but uh, we brought people in from all six continents with the scholarship program. Uh, it's very expensive to bring people in. Most flights were over $1,500 round trip, and that's just the flights, and then there's the housing. So, you know, we spent a lot of money to do it, but this is part of the point of Fiske, is having people from diverse um, geographic locations, disciplines, um, all in the same room. Fiske happens through volunteer work. You know, uh, I have this written into my job description to, to help direct Fiske, but um, ev just about everybody else um, uh, is on some level of volunteer community or uh, committee. There's the steering committee, and there's uh, the, if you want to raise your hands, I know Dan and Cameron and Ron are here. And there are several others that will be here later in the week, um, like Stephanie in particular. Um, and we're really grateful for their work. This is just a high level committee to decide about, you know, major future directions of Fiske. Um, but the program committee does the real bulk of the work. This year, it was myself and Kathleen Jagodnik who were co-chairs. I really give it, this is why Kathleen's name is in bold. Uh, she gets all the credit. She ran the per, uh, review process like a pro and um, she like doesn't miss a thing in any of the reviews. So Kathleen, you're out there, you're watching. Thank you very much. And everybody else on the committee performed reviews and everything. It's a four month process from the call for proposals. So we get them in, we do the reviews and then we finalize the curriculum. Um, it's the biggest part of planning in the whole year. And it's really rewarding to do it and fun. It's a good group. Uh, the archive committee will be working with instructors uh, immediately after the conference to take what is archivable you know, not the um, the student work that you do in the classes that will be kept private um, and won't be shared more widely, but the course materials that can be shared widely will be. And um, here are three of the scholarship recipients right here coming in to sit down. Thank you guys for coming. Um, so Anna Oates is the, the uh, leader of the archive committee and Ye and Nina and Erica and Danny all do great work with that. It's a great group, the archive. They should never, ever disband. Mm -hmm. uh, and <laughs> the communications committee was a, it was a bit slapdash this year. Um, we didn't really, I would say, communicate as, as well as we could have, but we did our best to try to, you know, make sure people knew about the conference and could come. Um, uh, it was myself, Danny Kingsley, Elizabeth Shook, and Kathleen Jagodnik, just really pushing the messages out um, as they come along in terms about registration and and all those kinds of things. And I do have a couple of support staff mem members who do uh, a lot of paid work um, leading up to Fiske, Margaret and Lucia. They're based in San Diego. Um, so uh, just to... Uh, reiterate, you know, it, none of this would be possible without all the volunteers that put it in. Um, I, I do like to take a lot of the credit, but I, you know, can only take about this much because without all of you involved, I would be nothing. So, and uh, more importantly, Fisky would be nothing. So, um, communications this week, uh, if you're still on X or Twitter, uh, a lot of people have run from it. Force 11 has run from it, I believe, right? X. I mean, I don't think we have a profile on it anymore, but perhaps Mastodon. But any way that you communicate in social medias, if you can use the hashtag Fisky2024 to push things around, you know, let people know that you're here and that you're having a good time or enjoying your course, or just, you know, let people know that you're part of the event and it's going on um, and try to spark some conversation. 
So plenaries this week. Um, we had last week on Friday the Fisky virtual keynote uh, with Ivan Aransky and Martin Rittman. It was very good. I've gotten a lot of compliments on it. You want to watch the recording if you haven't seen it. Um, it's up on Huba. And today we have Dan O'Donnell talking about academic freedom, and we'll get to that in just a second. Uh, our closing keynote is Danny Kingsley and Leslie McIntosh talking about Trust Global and all that jazz. Um, I'm looking forward to that as well. We have some community events this week. We're going to do some level of instructor dinner tonight um, after the end of courses. So we'll make some kind of plan probably at lunch. Um, there's going to be fireside cat sessions. Uh, an hour is set aside for conversation on Tuesday and Wednesday with our general um, topics for each, but that's just a starter for conversation. And then the library reception on Wednesday night, uh, right after classes end at 5.30, it's 5.30 to 8. It'll probably be set up in here and in other rooms nearby. There'll be um, uh, tacos and other snacks, uh, definitely dinner to be had, and uh, an open bar. So please take it easy on the open bar. We get We pay by the drink. So I just want to say a few things. Give yourself this week the time that you need. More time is needed for your courses beyond the scheduled course sessions. You will have some reading to do. You will have some group work to do, perhaps, with people. Um, you know, maybe your instructors will be merciful, but you should, you know, be ready for that kind of work being handed to you. Um, and besides coursework, budget time to, you know, uh, make a point of connecting with other people in the group. Um, it, we all have to work together to get to know each other and have a really dynamic and interesting week as much as we can. Uh, do be cautious with your belongings. I mean, uh, theft can happen. Um, as far, I say this to people from, you know, other parts of the world. So, you, you know, um, you can leave things in the room that you're in, but, you know, don't walk out of that room and leave things behind. People will steal things and, and walk away. It does happen all the time in libraries. So uh, keep that in mind. Just, you know, keep yourself uh, um, aware of your belongings. And um, uh, when you're outside, the sun here is very powerful. This is my cheap Irish skin. I've been here a week and I've avoided the sun as much as I can, like looking for the shade all the time. Um, and I'm still sunburned. So um, so I warn you all, just be careful. It's, you know, just 5, 10, 15 minutes in the Southern California sun is much more powerful than, you know, for somebody from Buffalo. It's not going to be the same. So keep that in mind and wear sunscreen if you got it. And relax and enjoy. You know, one of the reasons we built Fisky was it. it uh, we wanted a summer week of of learning and engaging with your your partners, but you wanted to do it in flip flops and shorts and be close to the beach and all that kind of good stuff. So um, we do hope you absorb that kind of uh, thought here. Enjoy the you know lazy UCLA um, uh, campus feel, and um, I. That's it. Here we are, Fisky number eight. Let's get rolling. Uh, we have uh, academic freedom, privilege, and